Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, this video is going to be very interesting, I think. We're going to do another Raspberry Pi build, but a little bit unique from what I've done in the past. The key component to this is still going to be the Raspberry Pi 4. This is my extra one after upgrading my little Active Directory server from this 4 gig version to an 8 gig version, so I have this extra. But I've also gotten a hard drive my son donated that he took out of his laptop. It is a pretty good one. It's a one terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive. Well, what we're going to do here in this video, because this is really part one, we're going to also have a part two that follows this. But in part one, we're going to get that together and working with the Raspberry software. So we're going to have to get this Raspberry SD card transitioned over to the hard drive so that the Raspberry Pi can boot from it. Believe it or not, that's not as difficult as it sounds. Now, you could do that by itself, but I've decided to do it at the level that is on a more professional basis. So rather than just put it all together with cables and just have it sit there, maybe even, you know, put some little plastic or wood thing together, we bought something to make this all top-notch. These parts here were bought from Geekworm. And Geekworm is a company that supplies specialized parts for things like Raspberry Pi. And I have four boxes here. The first one being a special board that's going to go underneath the Raspberry Pi to allow you to mount the hard drive underneath that. The second thing is a special power controller. It's not the actual power adapter. I have that separately here, a 4 amp version of it, because we're going to be drawing extra current with a hard drive. But this sits on top of the Pi, sort of sandwiching the Pi between itself and the hard drive board. And it allows you to do things to control the power. I think it also gives you a couple of extra USB specialized ports, including a USB-C as well, just to make the whole thing you know, work a lot better. And it comes with the capability of doing soft shutdowns and soft startups, which is very important to turn it into something that approaches a real computer. And the part that's going to make it look like a real computer is the case. This is a special case, I'll put it up on the screen now so you can see it, that looks like a little console. Very small one though. It's only, I think, three by four, or three and a half by four and a half, and it's only about three inches tall. And it's going to have a special power on, power off button, along with all of the things needed to make it uh, function properly as a little console, including the capability for good airflow. And we'll go over all of that as I put this together. Well, this is going to be multiple steps to this particular part. We're going to end up with a working system, but it'll be working with the Raspberry software. Ultimately, in part two, we're going to change that software over to a special version of Linux. I believe it's a, a variant of Debian Linux that was specifically modified to allow a Raspberry Pi to be turned into a digital video recorder or DVR for entertainment systems, you know, recording movies from your favorite online sources or if you have an antenna, uh, broadcast shows of any sort. We're doing this project for my daughter. She's paying for these parts. Once it's all together and working, I invested to start. But this is her project. She's the one that came up with the idea as something she'd like to have. When she heard it was a Raspberry Pi in there, she said, maybe this is something I could do, and I believe I can. So this first step, we're going to start off by doing a, a box opening of all these little pieces here that I have from Geekworm. Then we're going to take the Raspberry Pi, which has this capability, and copy over, and I have one of those devices to allow you to connect a hard drive to USB port. I've shown that in previous videos. This will go in there and then it'll connect to the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll take the SD card and we'll copy it over. And it's a function that comes with a standard Raspberry Pi software. I also have here, just to complete the set, a set of heat sinks. I actually bought six of these sets, and this is just one of them. I used another one partially for my little um, Samba Active Directory server. But on this one here, it's only got two of the heat sinks already, so I'm going to add in one for the CPU, one for the memory, and one for the wireless controller. So these are heat sinks for them all. Now, 
the power supply has a fan on it, also the case. And we'll talk about that in terms of how those are going to work out as we build this. And then finally, once I've done all of that, then we'll put everything together, bring it up, and you'll see it work. So if you get anything out of this video, I'll ask, as I usually do, at least consider subscribing to my channel. It would be very helpful. Well, without any further ado, let's get started. Here are the four Geek Worm boxes, and we'll go through now and open up each one of them and show you what's inside. We'll arrange it so that we can make the assembly go a little bit more smoothly. So let's start with the main component that we need in order to attach the hard drive. We'll push the rest of these out of the way for now, and that's this one right here. It's a model X825. This one is version 1.5, and it is a circuit board. Comes with a lot of stuff. We got the hardware, including some standoffs. We're not going to be using all of these, and I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes which ones are going to not be used. It has an instruction sheet, which unfortunately is in black and white. So hopefully making this video for everybody will make it a little bit easier on what has to be done here. It has a special power cable, and I'm pretty sure this is a cable we're not going to be using either. Now this we will be using. This is a special connector for the USB. We're going to be connecting the hard drive through the USB 3.0. And in order for that to work, they provide this little jumper, which jumps over the USB 3.0 from the Raspberry down to this controller board, because it has a USB connector on it as well. We're definitely going to be using that. And then finally, the board itself. And the way it's going to work, it has the connector for the hard drive on the bottom. It's upside down right now. And then this is the way it's going to be lying flat with the Raspberry Pi basically mounted right here. As you can see, it has its own power adapter. So we can actually plug power into here if we wanted to rather than the Raspberry Pi. But even that's not going to be used. And I'll explain that later as we put it together. And then here is the USB 3.0 connector that'll connect over the hard drive logic to the Raspberry. Similar to the device that you use when you're doing a hard drive through a USB 3.0. It's the same logic that's built onto this board here. And it's meant for any SATA hard drive, 2.5 inch, as the writing here says. And it has some different options that you control with jumpers, and it has different connectors. Now these connectors are protected. We're not going to use them all, but they have little protectors on here to protect the pins when you're not using them. And we'll be leaving those on where not needed. I think at least one of these on this board is not used. Now let's open the power controller board. And as I said before, this is going to sandwich the Raspberry Pi between it and the board that has the hard drive on it. Again, screws and standoffs. Not all of these are going to be used either. This one has another power jumper to it. Now this is going to replace the power jump jumper that I just showed you from the SATA card. Has another set of instructions. They're exactly the same. And then we have the board itself. And this will go on top of the Raspberry. It has a fan built into it as well. So there's a little 40 millimeter fan here. Blows right through the, the actual main components of the Raspberry will be right underneath that fan. That's why it's positioned where it's at. It has connectors as well. Now this one actually connects itself up to the IO 40 pin connector on the Raspberry Pi and it passes through. So you still have full access to all the pins that you need. They've actually put off to the side here any of the pins that are needed for other features like connecting up to the other boards and that might exist in addition to the Raspberry, like the one I just showed you for the SATA hard drive. This one has a power connector too, and this is the one we'll be using, as I'll explain later. And then here we have the actual case, this console case that I talked about. Let's open this guy up and see what's inside. Another set of the instructions, and I believe all, all of these are exactly the same from one to the next. Yep, exactly the same instructions. Let's take the case out of the box here. Now this one, I'm going to have to unscrew it to get all to all of the things that it came with. So let me do that now. Okay, the top comes right off. Now it has its own fan that it came with. 
but as you will see, we're not going to be using this fan. The fan we're going to use is the one that's on top of the power controller. So it has a fan, should have some hardware in here with some standoffs. We are going to use some of this, maybe not all of it. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure not all of it. And we have a special power switch. And this is going to actually connect through this hole here in the console case and produce a nice dressy looking light. It lights up as well. So it has, it looks like a blue rim to it. So it'll have a blue light when it's powered on. So that's a nice little thing. And then this case here will hold all of the other things that we've already shown, including the Raspberry Pi. And then finally, we have the actual power adapter that I bought specifically for this one. It's a higher out amperage output than you would normally get. This one supports four amps. It looks like it has an international plug to it, okay, if you're in Europe or parts of Asia. That's a regular plug. That's what I'll be using. So it has like a universal connector depending on which kind of plug you want for it. We put it like this, push this through here, and then it locks in place with this little latch. Okay, now I have the Raspberry Pi set up, connected up to, the com to its monitor, connected to a keyboard and mouse. I also put the heat sinks on, so I have the heat sink on the CPU and the heat sink on the memory. I already had the ones on the two other ICs. So what I'll do now is I have to take this hard drive and put it into this docking station. Now this can also be an SSD I chose because I had it available to use a regular hard drive. So if I turn this on, this is a freshly initialized hard disk. I actually went into disk part, which I showed in a previous video how to do that. Connected it up to my main computer and completely wiped this disk clean. So we start with a fresh one. So let me turn this on. You see it initializing and it stopped. So now we're up and ready to go. So let me go now into the Raspberry and I'll first start by plugging this in. Actually, let me uh, turn it off first. I'll plug it in and then turn it back on. Okay, so now it should be recognized. If I go to the Raspberry accessories and then there's an accessory called SD card copier. You do a copy from device to a device. Let me see what we got as a choice here. I see both listed so the source I'll set as the SD card. The destination I will set as the Western Digital Disk and then I'll go ahead and say start. It's asking me if I'm sure. I'll say yes and now it's doing it. Now it's copying the SD card over to that hard drive. Let's see how it goes. Completed. So what we'll do now is close this. We'll close. And now the next thing we're going to do is actually make sure that we have the BIOS up to date. Turn off the hard drive so that it's off now. I'm going to step through at this point how to check to make sure the BIOS is properly set to boot from the USB drive. So the first thing I will do is I will go into the command prompt and I'm going to make sure that we have all of the software updated properly. So I'm going to do sudo apt update. See what we got here. It'll do any updates to the Raspberry software that I need. It's doing full updates to it. We need to do this to make sure it has the proper applications that we need to go into the BIOS of the Raspberry. Okay, all done. There really wasn't that much to update, just a couple of modules. Then we do a uh, sudo rpi-update. That is the utility that we need. We want to make sure that it is updated appropriately. So we want to update it even if it didn't automatically update. I'll do it. So it's apparently something new there. It's doing an update of the firmware right now just to make sure we have the latest one. Okay, we're all done, but at this point I'm going to have to do a reboot in order to make this take effect. So I'm going to do a sudo space reboot. Okay, we're now back up and running. We've completely updated the Raspberry Pi kernel and the utilities that we need to go into the Raspberry Pi configuration panel. So now we have to go back into command prompt and now we will go into the tool that will allow us to do the updates. So the first thing we do is 
RPI dash EE prom dash update. And we need these options minus D and minus A. So it says we have the latest EE prom. We don't have we don't need an update for that. It was just checking that. Now we have to do raspy config. Now we're into the BIOS. It looks very similar to like the old PCs, right? And we have to arrow down to advanced options. And in advanced options, one of the ones, A6 in this case, is called the boot order. We click on that and it gives us a choice. B1 is to boot from USB device if the SD card boot fails or to boot from the network if the SD card fails. We want to boot from the USB device. So that's what we will choose. USB is now the default device. And now I can come down here and finish. I'm using arrow key. The mouse doesn't work with this utility. Finish. Would you like to reboot now? Let's say no to this because I'm going to want to shut down and pull out the SD card. So that's done. Now let's actually pull out the SD card and connect the USB and see what happens. I'm going to do a shutdown first and take care of that. Okay, we'll do a standard shutdown at this point. We'll come in here to the Raspberry and just say shutdown. And I want to do a full shut hit. Okay, now that it's completely shut down, I'm going to do two things. So I'm going to, it's still connected. So I still have my new hard drive connected through USB. It's not powered on right now. Let me pull the SD card out. So the SD card is now out. And then I will power this guy up and see what happens. I'll first power the hard drive on, make sure it has power. And then I'll power up the Raspberry. It's booting up. There it goes, it's booting up. We're accessing the hard drive as you can see here. And we're up. We're actually up in the hard drive at this point. Let me go ahead and do a disk free and see what we get. And the disk free shows that I have a terabyte and most of it is available. Look at that, available 9017, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Only using, uh, looks like nine, nine and a half gig out of the terabyte, so 2%. So we're up and running good. That worked well. And you can see it intermittently accessing the hard drive as I do different things. So at least we know it's all set at this point. So once I put the whole thing together, it should just work. That's why I wanted to test it on the desk here first to make sure that the hard drive was copied properly. Okay. Let me shut this guy down and uh, we can proceed with the build. I do apologize, but I have to break this particular part into two separate videos. It would be much too long if I didn't do that.